There's a threat in the world today, a threat to our way of living, a threat to our society, and maybe even a threat to our very existence. And what is this threat? For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world. He is the one. I am. I am the ass. He is. And we are Black and White Sports. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I'm supposed to be a franchise player, and we in here talking about practice. How am I not found find the best fight in the world? You tell me. Because you're retired? Come here, I want to see your face when you're asking this question, and the way you're going to ask it. Little man in the eye before you try to kill him or make up something. He went, he went through my soul. And I'm not surprised. What is going on, BW Sports One World? That guy right there is the one. This guy right here is the ass. And together, we are Black and White Sports, powered by First Financial Bank and Mr. John Wayne Buzzard up there at 3535 East 96th Street in Indianapolis. Also, Sean Nugent, Rockstar Realtor, 317-503-8322. Damn it. What is going on, my man? You remember, you have to talk into the mic. They can't hear you on audio if you're just doing sign language. And some people might say that's gang language, man. You better watch yourself. Man, I'm doing good. I'm just practicing the art of mutism. <laughs> you don't do very well with that. <laughs> well, I just made it up. <laughs> It's coming from the one shenary, right? Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, tonight we have a special guest. It's a little special couch talk uh, segment. We have a special guest, and I have a little video to kind of bring him on um, with us. I am a little biased on the whole situation. What? Just to let you know, I love couch talk. I like couch talk. I like couch talk. You know. Once I get a new camera set up and all that, I'm going to be laying back like this, and I'm going to be couch talking it up, all right? I'll get the lights together, and I'll be in a, a, a lounge area. There you go. We can go to the Silver Fox Lounge. <laughs> all right. Without further ado, I'm a little biased on the situation. He, uh, I believe that this man should have been brought into the UFC – Years ago, because I've seen his uh, potential, I've seen him at in action, and he is finally a UFC signed fighter, hailing from Henderson, Kentucky. He is a tag MMA fighter, and I got to throw it out there, he also trains with Bobby Emmons a little bit. So, Bobby, nice to see you out there again. It's been a while. Uh, he is an 11-1 and pro record. Who I'm talking about, Damon? I'm talking about Mayhem himself, Nathan Manis. Nathan, what is going on, man? How's it going, guys? How y'all doing? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Sunday night, you know, we're just chilling on a Sunday night. It's beautiful weather here for now. I don't know what it is down there in Kentucky, Whoa, but I know it's out. hot. Time out. It's time hot. Out. It's the beautiful weather. It's been raining since 3 <laughs> It's beautiful now. The sunset <laughs> setting. It looks gorgeous. It looks gorgeous. Don't hate on my parade, Damon. He's yeah, a, Nathan. Hate. Nathan. He hates on my parade all the damn time. I'm. I'm kind of starting to pick up on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say that Nathan is now my second favorite thing in Kentucky. <laughs> Kentucky ah, yeah, yeah, right. first. <laughs> Well, Nathan, why don't you uh, give us a little quick bio about yourself, you know, how you got into the sport and all that, and let the uh, BW Sports 1 fans know. I, uh, I've been officially training for uh, about 10 years now. Um, I actually started fighting, you know, some backyard stuff, uh, me and the guys. We would uh, we watched a little bit of GSP and Matt Hughes kind of when they were in their primes and big and uh, – we decided we could start a little club, go out, start beating each other to death. Uh, that's really how it started. And uh, I met Brad, met Tag MMA. They took me in, and uh, you know it's it's been a it's been a good time ever since. 
Nice. Now, your last fight, I believe, was in February, correct? Yeah, February 1st. And that was against the younger Van Camp, correct? Yeah, that's right. Okay. And that was a quick fight, as I believe. I think it was uh, maybe two minutes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If that. I'll just say if yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. You no, love, you no hate nice. to the, yeah, no <laughs> hate to the Van Camps. Hey, but, you know, we got yeah. Mayhem himself on here, so we got to <laughs> talk him up. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, so go ahead, David. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. I want you go to join ahead. in on this. Go I want you to join in on this. I refuse. Okay, fine. I'll go next. He's just here for the show. <laughs> yeah, he's just here for the popcorn. Don't let him lie to you. So now you fought recently over the past few years. You fought a lot of fights over uh, across the border in Canada, right? Yeah, I had a uh, three fight deal in Canada, and uh, I actually re signed with them. And uh, I was maybe two weeks out from my fight, and uh, the the promoter there, the CEO, the mm -hmm. main guy, kind of got sick. And um, it's kind of been shut down ever since. I'm really not sure what's going on, but uh, uh -oh. everything worked out. Uh oh. Well, the world is in a a an interesting uh, times right now with all the shit what? that's going on. So yeah, for sure. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what is it? Tell us what it's like to go across the border up to Canada and fight in you know a different country. Right. Uh, man, me and Brad were not prepared. Uh, we came up there in our shorts and uh, flip flops and socks. Uh, I was cutting weight, so you kind of get cold, you know, anyway. And uh, it was up there snowing. Everybody had their face masks on. They're wrapped around their head. They're not trying to catch this wind. It was uh, the first time. It wasn't a great experience. Uh, but other than that, I'm not a huge guy on travel. It's all kind of the same to me. I was really there just to fight. And, uh, you know, I enjoyed it. But, uh, you know, it's just kind of just we're just fighting. Right, the name of the game. <laughs> yes, sir. I got a question <laughs> for you. Um, when when you look at the MMA scene, you know most of the guys or the 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 fighters now, since women are such a prominent name in it, most of the fighters now tend to come from other areas. Um, like um, some have a martial arts background, jujitsu or something like that you have boxers that come in and you have wrestlers that come in what were, what was your background was you in the boxing or did you like wrestling in high school or something like that uh i actually started boxing um nothing too crazy it's just kind of how i got into it and uh my coach now is actually a wrestling coach he helps out the high school he uh he coaches like the little guys middle school and uh he's actually turned me around i think i'm a wrestler now i hate to say it but i think i'm a wrestler <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Coming from All a right. boxer, yeah, coming from a boxing uh, background, and to call yourself a wrestler, it does, I, I get it. I know it's it's like a it's a, a double edged sword. You love yeah. being a wrestler, but man, you hate saying that being a boxer. <laughs> I uh, I was working under a uh, professional boxer. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard of Daniel Maldonado. Yep, but uh, he was actually my boss for a little while, and. Oh man, he he just couldn't stand it. MMA, it's it's boxing. Boxing is the sport, and that's it. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Yep. So, yeah. what was it like to finally get that call? Let's let's put us into the day you're finding out. You know everything. What's going on? What were you? What were you doing? What was your emotions when you finally got that call? What was you know what happened leading up to it and and afterwards? All right. Yeah. So uh, I've been working construction here for a little while and I've been working 14, 16 hour days. It's been kind of tough with training and, uh, you know, it's kind of putting me down a, a little bit and not getting the call when I felt like I deserved it. So I uh, I got off on my lunch break and uh, I had five missed calls from my manager. So I just called him back. I was thinking, you know, maybe he just booked a fight, maybe a contender series, you know, at best. And uh, he said, man, I got you a fight. And I was like, Okay, so what are we doing? And uh, he said, it's Ray Borg, the UFC. I accepted it. Didn't ask me or anything, which is completely cool because he already knew I was in. 100% uh, in. They could have told me anybody. Any weight class. I've tried to take 55 short notice, 45 short notice. This fight's at 35. So he already knew we're accepting it. And, uh, man, I was really just kind of kind of tripping, really. You know, it's it's been a couple of days now, and I'm still kind of tripping. <laughs> Hell, yeah. I would be, too. If I get that call from, you know, the, the, 
the highest level that you're in. And, and especially, like I said earlier, especially when you of all people have been dedicated to this sport for so long, as much as you have, and you have the talent. And I don't know why you've been overlooked, but you are finally in there. And I just want to say again, congratulations, man. I appreciate it, man. It's a uh, the dream come true. We're gonna we're gonna go get that win, though. It's not enough. There you go. There you go. Well, something you just said there, uh, Dan, kind of brought something in my head. All right, now we see a lot of gyms. We see a lot of people that have a lot of gyms, a lot of good fighters. Uh, Dan, you were mixed in with it a little bit. We saw a lot of fights. We've seen stuff go different places on the small market. Now, when we get up to those UFC and those Bellator type levels, how much of those small market gyms, like I'm assuming yours is a small market too, right? So yes, how, do you, how, do, how do you get yourself in a small market gym, not titled, not attached to one of these ones where fighters just come in and in and in? How do you, how, what do you do to get yourself? Is it just straight wins or do you have to like be, uh, market yourself as a recruited? Uh, for me, man, I've had a, a lot of people tell me, you know, you got to move to a big gym. You got to have, you know, UFC caliber training partners. And like, there's been a lot of guys that get in on five, six and oh, Cody Garbrandt was kind of from around here. He's from Ohio. He was six and oh, when he made it in, which obviously he's great. He's done really well. But I, you know, I feel like that's because he was with Uriah Faber. He was a team alpha male. He, he had people in, you know, the UFC's ear. But uh, that's never really been a part of my story. My story is this small town gym with the training partners that I've grew up training with. Uh, I don't plan on going anywhere. I think we're going to do what we've been successful doing so far. And uh, I'm going to take all these guys with me. Nice. That's what we'd like to hear. I like that. So yeah. basically what we're saying is when we see this first fight, we can basically expect to see more of you at that level. Like this is not a, Hey, I'm coming over here to take this short other fight. You know, you hit me up a couple times. I give me a couple grand to get on up out of here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, nah, I'm, I'm not getting the feel that you want to be there. Yes, sir. I signed a four fight deal, and uh, you know, I plan on winning every single one of those and uh, seeing a bigger number on that next contract. Nice. I love hearing I hear that. that. No, so, no. Oh, go ahead. I, no, Damon, you're on the road, brother. You go, <laughs> I gotta, man. I, I mean, I'm just. I'm, I'm now getting ready to play with it a little bit. Uh, so now we all know that you probably hadn't got that uh, introduction tape that everybody probably gets from your your boss now, <laughs> 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 yeah. giving you all the rules. So we just want I want to make sure I say thank you before we finish getting back into everything. Thank you for coming on before he puts the, the locks on you where you can't talk to nobody. Uh, no problem, man. I appreciate uh, appreciate y'all wanting to sit down and talk with me. Oh, man, no problem. No problem. Now, kind of going back to when you said you got that call and all that, and you said, you know, it didn't matter who who it was as long as it's UFC, yeah, you're in regardless, you know. How did it feel and how does it feel to know that you are going up against just in two weeks – you are going up against a top contender in the division who's fought for the title against Mighty Mouse, uh, I, I believe, three, uh, two and a half, three years ago almost. You know, how does it feel finally getting your shot and being put up against somebody at that caliber? Uh, man, I really love the matchup. Uh, I've looked at uh, some film. I've watched him fight. He's 5'4". I'm 5'10". He's got a 63-inch reach. I have a 72-inch reach. Uh, you know, I'm going to be in shape. I'm going to be ready. I think he's going to have a hard time, a lot harder time than he's probably over there thinking than he is, thinking I took this, you know, on a week, two weeks notice. I've I've been training. I've been doing this for 10 years. Uh, you know, he's a big name. Uh, I'm not getting any younger. Let's let's get some big names. You know, let's move up. So uh, we're ready for it. We're excited about it. We like the matchup. Nice. Now you said Love again. You. Oh, go ahead. Damn it. Go ahead. Man, go ahead. Damn it. Nathan, I don't think I have been able to not get words in as much as he does ever until tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I just pushed my way in. He's like, man, he's on. But I'm going to let him roll. No, you said you took this fight at 135. You know, where would you see your career going into? The, what division do you see your career going into? 
Yeah, I can still make 135. I wouldn't call it easy. It's never easy. But right. uh, I can make 135. I can make 135 for the next five, six, seven years. You know, this is where I want to be. And, uh, you know, I take 45 fights. I can do it. If something came up and they offered it to me, maybe I go and beat this guy. And in two weeks, I need a 45 fighter to step up. You know, I can do that. Uh, but 35 is probably going to be my home. Okay. All right. Damon, go ahead, man. man. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm Man. I ain't been 135 since like maybe <laughs> the sixth grade. <laughs> well, this guy, Nathan, this guy's five foot seventeen and a half. So I don't oh, think he yeah. has it. Yeah. It makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is crazy. But I mean, really, how you look at it, this these you said you signed a four fight deal. I think even if you even I think it's all about your showing. At this yeah. point, I think they know your quality of fight, your quality of of competitiveness, or they wouldn't have given you the call. I think right now, the 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 highest side is getting the win, but I think a good showing places you in an opportunity. One, you're experienced. You've had twelve fights. It's not like you coming in with some of these guys, like you said, is getting pushed up with four and five fights. Like I saw a guy the other day on uh, the Espen. I think it was like his first fight and they're talking like he's like oh we got to pay attention to this guy and oh my god was this dude terrible <laughs> so i think if you come in and you have a good showing you still put yourself in the opportunity because i mean right now signing that contract your life has just changed bro <laughs> yeah <laughs> i i agree with everything you're saying for sure you know uh i think if i come in and just put on a good performance just show that i belong i think everything will probably work out for me but uh, man, I don't know what everybody. These first four contracts, they're not uh, they're not crazy money. You know what I mean? I could mm -hmm. probably get by without working, and I might be able to train a little bit more. But you know, I'm trying to get set up. You know, I got a family, I got a wife. You know, we're thinking about having a kid. Uh, just competing and you know showing I belong really isn't going to be good enough for me at this point. I, man, I am good with he that. He said, I hear nothing but fucking determination out of this cat, dude. Right. <laughs> All I hear, and I love it, because I cannot wait to see your arm raised on August 1st against Ray and sh and telling people, look, I told you that this guy was been ready. He's been ready. He deserved a spot. Just like you've been telling everybody. Not just outside the cage, but you tell everybody inside the cage because you do have – full experience on both up and down, you know, uh, stand up game and ground game. I've seen you knock out power. I, you know, I've seen you work on the ground, get that, uh, submission. Yeah. <laughs> you got it, dude. You got it, man. Oh, um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. That's the thing. Uh, he hasn't really been finished too much in the UFC. I think mighty mm -hmm. mouse arm barred him. Mm -hmm. Everything else is decisions and split decisions. And, uh, I don't think a decision really does me justice. You know, I'm really coming to kind of put a stamp on it. Why Why fight for 15 minutes when you only have to fight for 10 seconds, that's, right? That's what I'm saying, man. Everybody's, oh, you didn't get your money's worth, man. You trained all this time. No, in and out. <laughs> Hell yeah, you get your money. That's, you're the guy who does get their money's worth. Right, yeah, it all pays the same. <laughs> right. Now, we kind of got to talk, you know, the, the whole – 2020 has been pretty jacked up with the whole COVID deal and all that. Let's kind of just fill us in on what training has been like, you know, through this whole time and, and what you guys have had to change or kind of adapt to in that sense. Yeah, um, we were off maybe six weeks. And uh, like I said, I was working a lot kind of during that time anyway. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's been hot and I'm, I'm doing roofing and construction. So, I mean, I'm basically getting paid to work out. You know, I'm, I'm in shape. Uh, still been hitting runs, you know, all the time, uh, lifting, doing all that kind of sort of thing. But we've been back in for eight weeks now, and I've been up at Nice Guy, you know, training with Bobby. That's always a good time, I guess you could say. They're monsters up there. They're all really good. It's a good yeah. time. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it was kind of hit and miss there at the beginning of all this, but we're back full swing, you know, training like we always have been. Cool. So what is your – what does your training camp kind of consist of? Now you don't obviously you don't have to tell every all the secrets and stuff. But what is your training camp consisting of against who you got in front of you? Yeah, so I'm a I fly out the 28th, so uh, I'm gonna have about a week and a half 
uh, more than anything, we've jumped right into it. You know, I'm I'm not really doing a ton of drilling. I'm I'm doing rounds on rounds, um, wrestling rounds, sparring rounds, jujitsu rounds. I'm staying, you know, getting my cardio up to where it needs to be, just to you know to be confident about it. Uh, we're just pushing it. We're pedal to the metal right now. I've lost six or seven pounds in two days since I found out. You know, hitting the diet, burning it off. You know, uh, it's just full blast. <laughs> so, can you give us the the current weight, or is that the secret? Yeah, uh, I woke the day after I found out. I woke up at fifty three, and I'm at forty seven right now. Oh yeah, hell, you're doing good then. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm on point. <laughs> yeah, hey, hell yeah. If I, if I drop weight like that, they think I had that shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I just picked up on something. You said you're flying out. Are you flying uh, to the island? Uh, I'm flying to Vegas. Yeah, from what I hear, Vegas. Yeah. Well, who knows? Uh, that may hey, change. Hey, I need yeah. to know the de- I need to know details on the island. You know what I mean, <laughs> everybody's excited worry. about the island, man. But they're I really don't want a fifteen hour trip myself. <laughs> right. <laughs> but we ain't seen the island. We saw one right. clip like a month and a half ago of some construction on the island. But we didn't see nothing on the island. We're right, angry. Right. We want to see the from the beach. Bitter. You know I mean, I'm looking for more combat. I, I need more to combat style. I need fight. No, hold on, David. Did you hear him? Did you hear him? What? So on what? that second, what? on that second contracted fight, when he goes out to fight like a top three or four guy, he's going to go to the Fight Island, and we're going, we're going to be interviewing him from the beach and all that, where Fight Islands taking place. It's like yeah, the, the, the nowadays Camute <laughs> tournament. Hey, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to send him the GoPro. Right, there you go. I got you. Uh, Damon, yes, you got, anything, you got anything else? Um, no. Uh, I would like. Um, who would you? Who would you most be looking forward to fighting? Okay, here's the scenario: you beat this guy. Oh, not if. When you beat this guy, here's the scenario. Your next fight, you have three contract fights left. You just beat a top contender. He ain't going to think past this one, Damon. He ain't uh, thinking past this one. (laughs) No, he is thinking because he already said the decision and a good showing ain't good enough. I got I got dreams. I got I got people to lay down. I got people to take care of. (laughs) So, yeah, after he takes care of this guy, I'm giving him middle second round because, you know, the lights, this bigger set of lights, even though ain't nobody there. It's a bigger set of lights. It comes at you a little different. You know, I think once he gets past that first two and a half minutes, I think you'll be just fine. And once he gets past that, who are we looking for? Because I know you just don't want to say, okay, well, I beat him. Now give me the number eight guy. Give me the number seven guy. No, I'll beat this guy. Give me yeah. somebody. Who who you uh, want? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, Man, I think uh, I need to stop this uh, the sugar show. Y'all know anything about that? Sean O'Malley? Mm-hmm. I think that would be a good fight. I've been hearing that for a couple of years that it would be a good fight. And uh, he doesn't know me, but I know who he is. And uh, I think that would be a good one. Oh, you don't know? He may know who you are. He's just, he just <laughs> he's doesn't going. know really much about you yet. Yeah, he's going to. <laughs> I, well, I would he love to find out today. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I would love he's to see that fight go down. Now – and kind of that same question, if you had anybody that was still able to fight at your weight class, who would you pick to fight? Um, at 35, uh, I'd like to fight Dominic Cruz. He was kind of a hard guy to uh, match up with with this past opponent, especially in his prime. You know, he's had a lot of injuries now. But uh, he's a guy I would have liked to have matched up with and just seen how it went. Okay. Now, who's your top three in your division overall, right. ever? ever? Ever, yeah. um, or who's your, who do you idolize? I guess uh, in my weight class, Dominic Cruz is one of those guys. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I like uh, TJ Dillashaw. You know, I, I've tried to steal a lot of his stuff. He was uh, one of my favorites, uh, and now Jose Aldo's at 135. So yeah. he was. Uh, I used to be at 45 when I was fighting for Coliseum Combat and all that, mm-hmm. and uh, hook and shoot. You know, I, I started off at 45, yeah. and Jose Aldo was a big guy for me. All right. Nice. Now, as long as you're not well, stealing the, the fire piss from Dillashaw, I guess you'll be all right, right? All right, right. <laughs> we're, we're definitely going to take some drug tests before we do it. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> all right. So that, uh, I mean, I'm 
Man, I'm excited. You know, yeah. uh, is this is this uh, going to be televised? I'm assuming. Yeah, from what I understand, ESPN and ESPN Plus. Yep. Now you, I I could be wrong, but you are. Are you the opener? Uh, I haven't really heard myself. I've seen some a few things posted, but I, I haven't heard. You know, officially. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, you can send me the inside text as soon as you know. You know. <laughs> All right. Yeah, <laughs> buddy. Right now, with no with no basketball, on, I mean, you still you still got me. <laughs> I still I still got can, him away from the court. Right man, now. you can still pull me away. But about two weeks, yep. two weeks, I'm gonna be I, pretty. I'm focused. excited about the basketball coming back too. For sure. There you go. There you go. Now, if you weren't in, uh, last yeah. question I got: if you weren't in MMA and you could pick any other sport, what would you do? Uh, I played basketball a lot. You know, if I was maybe 5'14", too, you know, I might have been able to do something. 5'10", <laughs> five, five, you know, I just uh, I couldn't compete with them. But that, it was my first love for sure. Okay. Well, Dan, that was a, a retarded question because yeah, he's from know. Kentucky. It has to be basketball. <laughs> yeah, it would be anything know. else. Are you a Kentucky fan? Uh, I like it all right. It's all, it's all right. I'm not a huge fan of any specific team, honestly. I like okay. players, and that's just kind of how it went. Who's your favorite yeah, player right now? I wouldn't right be a now? fan of a Kentucky team either. My favorite player? <laughs> uh, I like LeBron James. I like John ja Morant right now. He's killing it. Uh, Russell Westbrook, you know, really explosive, guys. Okay, I see his angle now. I won't hold he, he, him. I won't hold a, it against you. Uh, he's a <laughs> sleeper. No, I see it. He's a sleeper aggressive. I see it. Okay, he gives you need to you watch a, some of his fight videos, man. You uh, think sleeper aggressive. Once he, once he, he gave lot. you, he gave you a little LeBron, gave right. you a little Ja, exciting, and then flashy, he, boom, mature, and then he gave you a little, you know, a little Russell Russell. He got that crazy <laughs> in him. He got me like that. Yeah, he's, a, he's a killer. Always it's will that, be. It's that when that mayhem comes out, that's kind of like what you see in there, right? Yeah, Russell's my uh, in cage persona. There you go. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Well, Nathan, I appreciate you coming on, taking the time out with us. Um, when you get big and big, don't forget the little guys over here. And, uh, you know, we can hopefully get you in on another interview after that win August 1st. Yeah, man. Sounds good. Y'all, do you right. care if I mention a couple of sponsors? Hey, yeah, no, oh, that's a no. good time, man. It's going to I cost you time. 37 cents. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, first off, you know, uh, I'd like to thank God, you know, uh, I'm, I'm a Christian, you know, I couldn't have been here without him, you know, uh, I'd like to thank my wife, my manager, my coaches for being with me all this time. Um, I'd like to thank b and Construction, Max Custom Completions, Baker Chiropractic, Sweeps Apparel, Ape Ethics, Team Lynn Expressway Ford, Great North Supplements, Merle Painting, M&M Residential Services, Willett Landscapes. I appreciate all you guys. Thank you for your support. And tag MMA, right? Tag MMA, nice guy submission fighting, Bobby Emmons, Brad Cummings. Yes, sir. We all love Bobby. We all yeah, love that's Bobby. What, that's what I hear. Hey, <laughs> hey, if, if any of those guys who will be seeing this, you know, want to jump in on the internet <laughs> advertising game, there you go. <laughs> wow. Right here. That was, it. That was hey. the worst plug time ever. <laughs> Hey, I'll you got to get in where you fit in. <laughs> this is what happened. Nathan, now you see what I got to deal with. Ah, oh, man, it's a tough job. I know. <laughs> no, again, man, thank you for coming on. We appreciate your time. And uh, let's try to catch up once you get back home from Vegas. And uh, and I'm, I'm ready to see your arm raised on August 1st. All right, sounds good, man. We can do it. Sounds good, man. All right, man. You have a good night. Hey, we appreciate make it. Yo, sure we get all, make sure we get all his um, his social media yes. um, stuff so we, we yes. make sure we tag and all that yes. kind of stuff. We'll so make sure we keep his name in there. Yeah, send me um, send me links to all your okay. social media pages. That way we can put it up there on the website and on ours. All right. Sounds good, man. I'll do that. Right on, man. Have all a right, good one. Appreciate you guys. Yep. All right, man. Good luck, bro. All right. Thank you. That was fun, sir. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to see his arm finally raised in that big octagon on August 1st. Hey, man, he was talking like he re – hey, I like that kind of talk. Yeah, he's like, ready. Yeah. I've you told, can hear it. I told you, man. I told you he's <laughs> been ready. He has been ready. It. He has not been given the opportunity. 
And I cannot wait to see that opportunity being taken advantage of. Man, this motherfucker better not get knocked out and be shitty to motherfucker. Oh, no. No. <laughs> no, folks, no nope. folks. <laughs> <laughs> that guy right there is the one. This guy oh. right here is the ass. <laughs> and this has been Black and White Sports. Oh, Couch my God. Talk. I love it. I love what? it. What? I love it. I love what? it. I love okay. it. Powered by First Financial Bank. Call John Wayne Buzzard over at First Financial Bank, 317-417-8582, or email him john.buzzard at bankatfirst.com. And also cannot forget our rock star realtor, Sean Nugent. He's over at Tucker, sean.nugent at talktotucker.com. Or call him, text him, do whatever to that phone number, 317-503-8382. Damon, oh, hold on, man. I got to get the pew pew girl. She had done told me I have to message her to get the pew pews, and it is time for the pew pew girl. There she is. Damon, as always, what do we do? We try to keep Indy enlightened and sporty. And that was the loud pew pew from It's Jazzy J. Peace. Peace.